So in this over here, we're going to talk about how you can build a strong machine learning and AI portfolio. We already covered tons of videos inside that, like how you can build your own personal brand portfolio, how you should get started with doing projects, putting them out there in LinkedIn posts, GitHub, and so on. So we're going to dive through all of that in this single video here to see how we can build a strong machine learning AI portfolio, because now we have a strong resume, we know the job market in the AI field, now we need to have a portfolio that we can show off and use that as a reference, but also just to get people interested in us and also build a ton of credibility. AI machine learning is a very competitive space. We need to stay ahead. We need to be ahead of everyone else. We need to do something nobody else is doing or at least do it better than them. And if you just create your own projects and so on, could be specifically for your needs that you're working in, that is very important. So include projects that you have done in the machine learning space for your specific area with the techniques that you have used. Basically showcase all the skills, knowledge, and what you're able to solve. Build machine learning pipelines end to end. Again, as we mentioned in the start, it's really important that you can show going from a problem finding a solution to that problem, exploring, iterating on some different approaches, methods, and so on, and then act like doing something useful and also focus on creating real world projects. Think about like, just get in, just get this mindset here about, okay, how can I use NLP? How can I use computer vision for real world use cases that act like provide value? Because at the end of the day, if you just create an optic detection model that can detect cats and dogs, it doesn't really provide any value out in the real world. So you really need to find something specifically which can solve real world problems because people will just be way more interested. You might even get offers through those videos and the work that you put out there. So once you have done the work and so on, the documentation phase and putting it out there is just as important, if not more important, because again, you can have the best projects out there sitting on your own local computer, but if they're not out there so people can act like see them, you won't get the credibility from them and also the interest. People are pretty much just reaching out to me for different types of projects and so on because they've seen all my work on YouTube, LinkedIn and so on. I get tons of offers. So we want to get you to that position as well because then we don't have to reach out to people like everyone will just come to us. Of course, we can always reach out, build a stronger network and so on. But then everything is pretty much an autopilot. People will come to us instead with their specific needs and what they need to have solved. So yeah, the documentation phase is really important. Like show how you're solving the problem, documenting the work with the different models that you have tested out. The most important thing when you're doing that is visualization. So basically, both visualize your data, visualize your problem, also the model that you have used and so on. If you're doing some data engineering, show some results, show it in each individual steps in graphs, show some high level architecture diagrams and so on. If you're deploying full scale machine learning pipelines, all of that is really important because at the end of the day, like no one is going to sit and read like 10 pages of text. If you just take a look at the results, just take the output and just say that, I've done this, I've used these models here, this is the approach. The problem statement was like this, this is solving this problem here. You can set up a problem statement, you can solve it, and then you just show the results. So it's basically the exact same thing as we're doing when we're writing it in our resume. We want to have one line or two lines of text that explains the project, and then we just want to visualize the rest. It's also good to start with your GitHub, like four different projects that you're putting out there. Create a nice readme file that basically just goes through each individual step. Start with the project statement and then you can get started with the installation steps. So how, how to set it up. So people will also be very interested in that because the easier it is, the simpler you can explain the terms, the whole process and so on for setting it up, integrating the code into other solutions and so on. That's also why it's good to contribute to larger open source projects because it basically just shows that you're able to work together with others, integrate into larger code bases, understand large code bases and integrate your own features into that directly. So that's really important and what can really set you aside from most other people out there. If you take a look at LinkedIn, GitHub and so on, pretty much just like all your colleagues, all your friends, all the guys and girls you went to university with, if you just take a look at the GitHub profiles, I bet you that like 95, 98% of them don't even have a GitHub profile, which they're taking serious, putting documentation out there for the code that they're uploading and so on. They probably just use it as, as a sharing tool or like a database They just throw in their code, share it with other people and so on. So they don't really document the work. They don't show the results and all of that. And one thing that is for sure, that is the most important thing to do if you want to build up your network, your own personal brand and just the credibility around the work that you have done. 
So this is really important to do. Definitely going to do that. That is the most important thing to do. And I can't recommend it enough. Spend time on the documentation because you can have the most complex project, but if you don't put it out there, if you don't do the documentation, if you don't show that you're able to solve it, doesn't really matter how hard it is compared to just having simpler projects, solving real world problems, but you're then documenting it, showing the results. It's going to change everything and all the offers and so on, the credibility, and also when you're going to talk about the projects. And once you have done that, you can both put it on LinkedIn, Twitter, or like the X platform. You can even do YouTube videos and so on around it inside my AI career program. I know that a lot of people already like creating YouTube channels, LinkedIn posts and so on, getting tons of engagement. So definitely do that. I'm more than happy to help you guys iterate on it, make it perfect and so on. I definitely have a ton of ideas. So throw them over to me if you have any questions and so on. But it is really important that we just don't let it be inside GitHub. Like take it, create a LinkedIn post around it. I'm doing that with most of my work. I can do a LinkedIn post in 10, 15 minutes. It's a no brainer not to do it. Put it out there because then the algorithms will help you basically just distribute it all over the world. The algorithm will take over. People will start like to like your content. It will be distributed to their network. And then it's basically just this snowball effect that we're starting. We're building everything from scratch. We make sure that we act like build the foundation. And then we just have each individual step and layer that we build on top of that. And that's really important. We do that with everything in life and it will come to fruition at some point, like even doing the coding program, if you really want a good position, if you want to land a good job, get a lot of clients and so on, if you want to do freelance work, it's not really the work spent on doing the projects, but actually like documenting it, putting it out there that has the most impact. So it's really important. Like I would probably say like spend spend 30% of the time working on projects and spend 70% of the time documenting it, making it as easy as possible, putting it out there and building your own personal brand. I think that is a pretty good trade off. And even though you don't feel like you're doing work and so on by just writing, uh, setting up GitHub repositories and so on, at the end of the day, it's, it is what makes the difference. So just remember your portfolio is a living document of your skills, experiences, and pretty much everything that you're doing. So make sure that you stay up to date, keep on learning, keep on growing and so on, add it over time, and you're going to build a very strong foundation.